Hello and welcome to another haul and this is for the month of November 2020. Yeah, it is, I'm back, hello. I was in the last video, I was on the cupboard. Yeah, she was, she's back again though. I remember to take her out. Anyway, this is my haul for the month of November, no anime this time. Just manga. Quite a bit of it. Quite a lot of this I found on eBay for a good deal. Like this series here, which if you have watched my manga correction video, you will know what this is. I showed it in there. Anyway, first up, should we get going? Yup. I have a bunch of Yaoi Wright novels here, which I got from the same seller. Off of eBay for like £5 each. So I have Gentle Cage. This one, there's the back if you want to read it, is about these two were, I think, brothers in college or something, but then this guy's professor kidnapped him and like treats him like a slave and then he has to rescue him and like sort of nurse him back to health, I think, from what I know of that one. Yeah, these are all like ours though. I do have some pictures. These are all by June A as well. This one here is like an Arabian one where these two again I think I think met in college or high school and then he disappears and years later he goes to England to look for him and then he gets kidnapped and ends up in like this Arabian palace where he finds out this guy is actually the prince. Of that place, though he's trying to get home, but he also likes the guy. I haven't read any of these yet. Not yet. Next, I have Sweet Admi Ad Admiration, and this one is about this guy and his childhood friend. I like working for this company and he decides to go like move closer to where his work is but there's no place for him to stay so he ends up staying with his best childhood friend's older brother who he's had a crush on for ages but he's started to act cold towards him and now the two of them have to live together. This one is called Body Language. You can see that. And the postman's just been. I'll get that later. And body language is about these two college boys. Both of them are known for being like. This guy is known for like being. having slept with every woman on campus and like being rejected by them all afterwards. And this guy's known for taking it. Like being easy and to having either men or women, which is false, because, and he doesn't know where those rumours came from, he's actually a virgin. And the two of them ended up like hooking up. And this final one is called Dark Walker, and this is like it's a fantasy, I think it's based off of a manga series. It's about this guy who every night he has wet dreams of sleeping with this guy he doesn't know. And then he finds out he's a dark walker, which is someone who can, like, enter dreams and enter this, like, dream world. And then he finds out his classmate can also enter this dream world. So they're in this... there's a picture. So they're, like, in this dream world together and they have to, like... Fight somebody, I think. As I say, I've never read any of these yet. They all sounded good anyway, and they were very cheap. Next up, I have the next series which I got from eBay, which is the one I mentioned before. This is Junja Romantica, volumes 1 to 12, and this is complete in English. We uh, never got the rest. I think there's 24 out in Japan at the minute, but obviously it's by Brew, who was owned by Tokyo Pop. And when, obviously they went under, the series was dropped. So here's volume 1, here's volume 2, 
Junja Romantica is a yaoi series about three different couples being Junja Romantica, Junja Egotist and Junja Terrorist. And Junja Romantica is the main story and it's about Mizaki who is uh, his older brother asks his childhood friend Akihiko to tutor him to help him get into college. And so he does, and after Mizaki enters into college, he also finds out that Akihiko is in love with his older brother, but his older brother then announces he's getting married and is going to be moving away to Osaka, so Mizaki ends up staying with Akihiko, where the two of them end up getting together whilst they're living together. And I enjoy it, it has its cute moments. Romantic is the f my favourite story, but Egotist is a very close second. And Terrorist's okay. There, yeah, he's 46. It has its typical yaoi issues, but it's also um, cute at times. And I really enjoyed the anime, and that's why I picked this up. I think volume 12 ends like halfway through season 3 or like something like that. I know it doesn't cover all of season 3. It's 10. These are all in good condition, just slight yellowing of the edges. It's a spectre of an older series. And twelve. Volumes one, two, six, and twelve are like have this like glossy cover rather than the matte one, and the pages are like a lot thicker and whiter for some reason. I don't know if it's a different printing or what. But anyway, that's Junction Romantica, which is kind of difficult to push across the floor, so I'm going to push it this way. As you can see, if I push this to here, and you look at the spines, you can see, if I put this into the right, you can see the white ones, which are the, like the thicker glossy covers. So I might, is a, I'm not sure if it's a different printing or what. Anyway, let's move on to this stack. This stack is all new. I, apart from one volume near the bottom, this is all new. I didn't get it second hand. Anyway, first up we have Therapy Game Volume 2. I absolutely love this volume. This volume is so good. I loved it so much. Let me see if I can find a page I can show. It is a Yaoi series. It's a spin-off series to Secret XXX. And it's one of my favourites. I love it, especially after reading the second volume. The second volume was so good that I literally melted into the carpet whilst reading it. Anyway, it's Therapy Games about the younger brother of the guy from Secret XXX and the older brother of the other guy, and they meet in a bar one day after he was dumped by his girlfriend and he gets very drunk and starts talking to him. Minato is his name. I don't remember his name. I'm terrible with names. Anyway, Minato takes him home, but obviously not knowing where he lives, he ends up just taking him back to his house. And in his drunken state, he suddenly starts to um, get it on with Minato. Minato's totally up for it. He's a kind of a player. So the next morning, he realises that he has no memory of what he did because of how drunk he was. And then Minato decides to get revenge by making him fall for him and then dumping him. But obviously he starts liking him along the way. And that's very really good. I do recommend this yaoi. Next up is my final yaoi. Oh no wait, yeah. No, I think there's one more. And this is Cast Heaven Volume 3. I haven't read this one yet. But I enjoy how messed up Cast Heaven is. I very really enjoy messed up stories. I just write them for some reason. So this one's good. It's about a school where 
everyone's ruled by a caste system where they have these cards and the person who has the king card is in charge of the class and the person who has the joker card is like bullied. So everyone in the school has ranked by what card they have and the cards. Each card has like a different role attached to it. Like we have joker cards. Of like some of the cards for to be a preppy, a jock, a geek, stuff like that, a delinquent. So yeah, this is an interesting series. Next up I have the manga adaptation of I Had That Same Dream Again. I love the light novel of this. It was one of the best light novels I've ever read. It's by the same author as I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. I decided to pick up the manga adaptation to see what it was like and also because I really wanted to see what the characters looked like. It's a great series. I would highly recommend it in either form. The manga's good too. It's about this little girl, I think she's 10, who is asked by her teacher to discover what happiness means to her for a class assignment. And she knows these three women, a teenage girl who self-harms, a like woman in her like, I think, 20s or 30s who is known as Skanksan and is ostracised by society, but obviously she doesn't know what a skank actually is. And then... An old woman who's living out the remainder of her life in this like little cottage up on a hill. And through these women she has to try and figure out what they have in common. And also how they relate to each other. And also through them she starts to discover what happiness is to her and it's very good. And the twist as to who these women are was very good, although I did see it coming I mean, but that's not necessary because it's that obvious, it's more that I'm just good at guessing these things anyway, moving on, we have The Day We Rives of High School Boys Volume 2, this is the continuation this is a comedy like episodic manga where each chapter is like a different comedy sketch and it's very good I have yet to see the anime but yeah it's just about high school boys there's three main ones and then there's a few other ones and what they get up to and stuff like this chat this volume we had like a four part cultural festival and stuff and the girl who talks about the wind is back and if you're looking for a good comedy, pick this one up, I would recommend it. Next up I have The Final Omnibus of Elfin Reed, Volume 4. This is it, Elfin Reed is finished. This is the final volume. If you're looking for, like, if you watch the anime of Elfin Reed, and now want to read the manga hoping for a better ending, you're not going to find one. This Elpen Read does not have the happiest ending in either anime or manga. But Elpen Read is very good. It's like a horror action -y series with some comedy and etchy moments. Which aren't as bad as in some other series. Anyway, it's about Lucy, who is a Dichronius, which is a child born with horns and the ability to have these vectors, which are like ter invisible arms come out their back, which they can use for things, usually to kill people. And Dichronius is also born with this instinct to wipe out the human race. And then there's this lab, which is like studying them and keeping them captive. And then Lucy escapes. But on the way out, she gets shot in the head, loses all her memories, and ends up washed up on this beach where this cousin, these two cousins pick her up and decide to take her in. And things go from there. It's a good series. I would recommend it. Next up, I have... You're burying me behind the manga. 
the Ancient Magus by Jack Flash and the Fairy Case Files, and this is an adaptation of the story in the anthologies. If you've read the anthologies, you would know there's a story in there called Jack the Flash and the Rainbow Egg, and this is adapting of that. This first volume ends where part one of two of the anthology ends. So volume two is most likely going to cover the second part of the story and I don't know whether they'll end it there or whether they'll do more content to it. We'll have to see but this volume was enjoyable to see the characters from the story in manga format although the art style in this was not my favourite I was not very keen on it. I preferred the art style of the two pictures that were included in the anthology. Anyway, it was still good. But if you like the Ancient Magus by give it a try. This is Spy X Family Volume 2. It's a spy action comedy series about this spy who's asked to... He works for one country and he has to like stop a war with this other country by obviously being a spy. And his latest mission is to get close to this guy and gain information from him. But the only way to get close to him is through his son. So he's asked to adopt his daughter and find a wife and enroll her in this school. So she can, he can get close to him through his son by having his daughter befriend him. But it's not really working out. These two here. And it's very good and the little girls is probably the funniest part of this. If you want a different type of shonen... I would highly recommend it. Next up I have Kamomo Confessory Volumes 4 and 5. This is complete the series. It's only 5 volumes long. It was a decent series. It wasn't the best at all but it's still definitely readable. It's about this rich girl whose father loses all his wealth and she has to go work in her childhood friends confessory and learn how to like live in a real world and be like a commoner and make sweets and stuff. I'd say it's a decent series. Nothing spectacular though. It's by the same author as Special A and Voice of Sayo Academy. Both of those series I think are better than this one. It's completed now anyway. I actually finished another series, so that's something. Next I have So Cute It Hurts, Volume 6. I haven't got a volume of this in such a long time. So much so that I've totally forgot everything that happened in the previous volume and had to skim it. So Cute It Hurts is about these twins, a brother and a sister, who both go to different schools. And the, the sister's very into history. She's like a history otaku. And... Her brother is failing his history test, so he asks his sister to dress up as him and go to his take his test in her place. So, she, but he goes to an all boys school, so she has to dress as his her brother to attend this history exam, and then he dresses as her to attend her school. So basically, this basically pretending to be each other, and going to each other's schools. But that's not all there is to the story, because that kind of stops after a couple of volumes because. She meets this guy at the old boys' school, but he's allergic to girls. He can't come within, like, two metres of them without fainting. And then the boy meets this deaf girl whilst attending his sister's school and stuff. It's a good series. The artwork's really nice as well. Give it a go. Next I have Love Me, Love Me Not, Volume 4. This is Ao Sakitaka's newest release in English. It's already finished in Japanese. But yeah, our whole ride ends this month, I think, 12th? I think the final volume comes out on the 12th here. So it's almost over, Badgie. Oh, fantastic, finally. Oh, I don't like that one either. Anything by this all fair sucks. It, don't listen to Baji. This series is very good. I don't know whether 
this uh, how ride will end up being my favourite of hers. I'll have to wait until I've read more of this one. I that this volume was really good. Was it? Next up, I have Not Your Idol Volume 2, and this is all we'll have for a while. The author is on hiatus due to her health, so we're not going to get Volume 3 for a long time yet. But this volume was really good. The series is excellent. Artwork is fantastic. If you like, if you've seen the artwork in this, it's about this girl who was—I can't remember her name. She was an idol, but then at a fan meet, she gets attacked by a fan, and like he like scratches her knife like down her arm and leaves her with a big like injury on her arm. And ever since that, she hasn't trusted men, and she's left the idol world and started dressing as a boy and going to a school and I, at that school she meets this boy who's just trying to learn how to trust and there's also this girl here who's can be a bitch sometimes and it's a very good series I would highly highly recommend it although we will be waiting quite a while for the next one Next up, I have Way of the Houses and Volume 4. This continues to be the same as always. It's a gag manga about each chapter. This is ex Yakuza being now house husband doing like house husbandy stuff. It's still good, but it's getting a bit repetitive. They're using the same joke over and over again, and there's no like continuing story or anything. So I'm gonna get Volume 5 a go. If it continues to just be the same thing, I might just drop this series. I mean, it's good. I don't think it's the best comedy. But it's good, but there's only so much of the same thing over and over again that I can take before I get fed up. So yeah, I'll continue for the, to the next volume at least. Next up, I have one of my favourites of this year. Something's Wrong With Us, Volume 3. This series is so good. It's like a psychological show. No, it's a psychological Jose series where there's this girl. Her mother is framed as murdering this guy's father. And this guy is the only one who witnessed it and said that it was her mother that did it. But um, years later, her mother sends her a letter before she dies saying, I'm innocent, it wasn't me. So she's decided to go find the truth by marrying into this family. So she marries this guy, who the guy who flamed her mother. She ends up becoming his white fiancé and agrees to marry him so she can get close to the family and try and find out what actually happened. And whether her mother is innocent or not. And she's finding out a few things more in this volume. Things are happening. Also, she, it also needs to make sweets as well. Because she loves making sweets. It's her passion. And that's all she wants to do, basically. Is find out. Make sweets and find out. What actually happened back ten years ago. Or was it twelve years ago? And his mother, an absolute, she's an absolute, she's an absolute bloody horrible person. And she's starting to maybe suspect that it was the mother. Not her mother, but his mother. But I think that'll be a bit too obvious. Maybe, like, maybe it was the grandfather. Maybe it was somebody else. Maybe he, the father, killed himself. Who knows? I, I, I need to find out by continuing to read this. It's maybe hard. Okay, next up I have... This is the final BL of this haul. It is a June title called... The Day... 
I became the day I become a butterfly and this is a series of six short stories that meant to be like bittersweet stories this is really quite heavy this is second hand but you can really can't tell this is in fantastic condition no there's no like yellow edges or anything and the page isn't like a nice quality too yeah, this is a series of six short stories. There's also this other one by this author called Same Cell Organism, which is more short stories that I'm probably going to look for if I enjoy this one. I haven't read it yet, but I don't know what the other stories are, but this is the description for the title story. It's about a boy who's just, who's been diagnosed with this illness who's now, I think it's life-threatening, and he's decided that when he dies, he wants to become a butterfly, but then there's this guy who falls for him, and he knows he's dying, but he's wondering whether he should pursue this relationship or not, and just try and keep him on from giving up. I yet to read it, but it sounded interesting. Next up, Perfect World Volume 3. I haven't read this one yet. I haven't read these bottom three yet. I've read most of the other ones. Perfect World Volume 3. It's about this relationship between a able-bodied girl and a boy who is in a wheelchair. And covers some of the struggles of that and stuff. It's a Jose. It's good. I would recommend it. Give it a go. Next up I have another one of my favourites. Sweat and Soap Volume 4. I don't know how I haven't read this yet. I really love this series. But this is a seinen romance about this girl here who sweats a lot. And she works with this company that creates soap. And she really loves this guy's soap. And then this guy comes along and smells it one day and says she smells very really good. And it asks if he can, like, smell her on occasion to get inspiration for soap and stuff. And there is definitely some, um, raunchy scenes. It's very good. Concept sounds weird, but it's very good. Highly recommend it. And last up I have Watercolor of his Heart of Taku, Volume 4. This is a two-in-one. This finally came out. I've been waiting years for this. And I haven't read it yet. I don't know why I've been reading other stuff. I've only been just binging Dungeon Romantica. There are five volumes in. Anyway, Watakai is a, a Jose series about otakus. There's this... There's these, like, four different characters. Six different characters. But there's this girl who's never been able to tell any of the guys she's dated about her being a yaoi otaku. She's never been able to tell anyone. And then she meets, meets, meets up with her childhood friend who is a gaming otaku. And he says, how about you go out with me since I already know about your yaoi otaku self. And she's like, alright, I'll give it a go. So the two start dating and then... There's this girl here who is a cosplay otaku, and this guy who is, I think, a manga otaku, if I remember correctly. And which of these two are a couple since high school. And then there's the, this, but here's younger brother, who is not an otaku, who meets this girl who's like a gamer, but she looks like a boy, and he mistakes her for a boy. And what a close just a very good series. And that is it for this haul. That is it for the haul. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week I'm thinking about doing an updated room tour. It's been a year since I did one. I haven't got that many new figures and stuff, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, that is it for this haul. Look from Bodry. And I will see you for another video. Bye bye. Bye-bye.